On this episode of Franken PC, redo. Make it look like a normal computer. I'm gonna call this thing the gay ribbon cable. Sound testing? Theoretically. I hope. So, for those unfamiliar with Frankenstein PC, it is essentially, well, a laptop motherboard. If you want to see me turn this from a completely scrap laptop and spare parts into this very unique looking desktop, you can click the link um, annotation or whatever you want to call it here. Current enclosure is what I call, or at least my resume calls, the quadrangle case because it's a bunch of four sided shapes and then there's some triangles thrown in for good measure. The problem is when I try to troubleshoot it, let's say I need to open it and then do some um, internal troubleshooting, it's a pain in the ass to work on. You have to remove five screws to open it. I have to disconnect some wires from this power switch. I have to move wires away. So long story short, I'm going to be building a brand new case for Frankenstein PC. Something that is easier to access, something that would really showcase its interior instead of that puny one white LED that illuminates the insides, sort of. The new case would have better access to the internals, like much easier access, a better view of the inside, better cooling, and I, I know I could make it look better. Also, I just want to make it look like a normal computer. So now what I'm going for the design is that um, a more traditional looking computer. Think of those slim, compact Dell desktops that you can put vertically or horizontally. Basically, the design I'm looking at right now is kind of like a Dell pre-built, like a compact Dell pre-built, but smaller, obviously, because it's based on a laptop instead of an actual desktop. Like normally with the design design work, you go for whatever design, like go wild at first and then scale down, scale down, scale down until you get the design you want, uh, like the final design in a sense. Here is kind of different. You are restricted with what you currently have, the layout, the positioning, how far can you go? That's currently a limitation. This heatsink is just way too small. I'm really gonna try cramming this AM2 heatsink on it, which is a, well, a much, much bigger cooler. So really this is all I'm worrying about. That's why I want to cut the heatsink. This high clearance to, for, to these chokes. It's 1.5 millimeters as well. I think I could even just not a cut, not cut the heatsink at all. Instead, I'm just gonna drill holes underneath the heatsink and then basically I'm gonna be screwing through those holes. Since I'm gonna be removing this, this slim SATA connector anyway and then run a ribbon cable so I could move the DVD drive wherever I want, this can move, well, as much to the side as I can because there's enough wire. I don't have to cut the heatsink, theoretically. I hope. This is so hard to cut. I mean, as you can see, I tried to cut it. It's aluminum, but it's kind of tough. And then disconnect the Wi-Fi antennas. And there we go. Now this is the interesting bit. So this is supposed to go on a ribbon cable and then a PCB. Being a thin ribbon cable, is a, if it, it of course broke. I basically soldered wires straight to the pins and then just ran wires to it. And then the other one goes to the um, power switch. There you go. And then it goes to these and then I could just plug it in here for a power switch. And then, oh, oh yeah, that is how this heatsink is installed on this system. It is simply zip tied to it.
So, I have completely rewired all those solder to the motherboard, parts of the motherboard kind of thing. And then of course we got the power switch so I could put it anywhere I want. Hard drive LED. The reason I'm using the tiny LED, it's because this hard drive LED lead is actually very weak. As usual, it's gonna take 19 volts from the power adapter, and then before it even reaches the buck converter to be converted to 9 volts to the electrical stuff, I want to power off the power adapter in this case, the two fans and the interior LED lighting. I want it to go through the relay first so that it is only on when it detects that the PC fan is on. <laughs> Look at that. It's working. We're getting 5 volts. Alright. And to get it to 9 volts. There we go. We got ourselves a nice, powerful cooling system. Plug it in. Okay. We got system power. Okay. System power. You got a hard drive LED. Five volts being provided by the fan header. We'll be right back after the break. So now it's time to clean all of this up. So, um... so we're going to be doing some sound testing between the AVC fan that came with this heatsink and the DC brushless Delta fan that came with the other heatsink that I bought that is currently installed in Honeycomb PC. So this is the AVC fan. This is the Delta fan. And it looks like the Delta fan wins for being the most quiet. It doesn't produce the rattling sound of the AVC fan, as this Delta fan only produces, well, wind noise. Also, 45 watt AMD heatsink. So now I can take the wiring loom and just plug it in. So if I need to disconnect it, I can. And the beauty of this is, of course, it's a one hole connector, standardized. 9 volts to whatever accessory I want to put, whether it's a fan or extra lights. Also, this is my soldering work. Eh, good enough? 
more electrical work. Now we have to take this patch of electrical contacts over here for the Slim SATA to this Slim SATA connector. Instead of it being fixed here, I want it to go wherever I want. And with for that, we're gonna need the help of the LGBT community. <laughs> I mean, come on, look at it. I called, I'm gonna call this thing the gay ribbon cable. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. So I'm gonna be using this gay ribbon cable that I found in Deco, and I'm gonna be using it so I could extend the Slim SATA port so I can put the DVD drive anywhere I want. Oh, there's gonna be some hate comments in the comment section. crap that I had to deal with. This is essentially a ground wire and I could just solder it to this pin or this pin over here. I could have run the wire to either this side or this side. I could run it to this post if I... Hell, I could just run it straight to here, but I want to do it right. And I had to clean everything up over in this area, scrape the surface again, put some solder, fresh solder first, and then heat it up a bit, kind of leave the iron over there. And then finally, we have a strong connection over here. Like I'm pushing it and it's not going away. Now that's a good solder. I can now eat dinner. All right, I am done wiring up the gay ribbon cable to the DVD uh, Slim SATA and I have plugged in a DVD drive with a Zubuntu boot disk. It turns on. Give me an F12 and I didn't plug in the HDMI cable. Alright, take two this time to BIOS. I am getting nothing. It's kind of loose. Hmm. So the connectors aren't that okay. All right, let's do another one. This is CJ Tech content right here. Yeah! <laughs> That's the sound of a working DVD drive. Oh yeah. How much I miss the sound of optical drives. Ho ho ho, okay. It's working. That is a 100% working optical drive. I have basically made that so the slim SATA port can be moved to anywhere I want. So I could move... Wow, that is pathetic autofocus. I can move this DVD drive anywhere I want. I can move it here, I can move it here, I can move it anywhere I want now. So why not just settle for an external one? Because again, it's kind of empty. I kind of want to fill it with something. Might as well use an optical drive. And it's going to be a computer that's going to be sitting downstairs in our living room. It's going to be connected to the TV. Just makes sense. It's still going to still make sense that it's got an optical drive. I think I'm ready to build the body. Ah. <sighs> On the next episode of Franken PC Redo. 
this is what I plan to design. Basically, there is a part where it has a lot of grills and it's a bit higher than the rest of the case. This is where it's going to be the cooling system. So you could accommodate, accommodate, but accommodate the fan and the height, added height of the new heatsink.